Good afternoon, allies. Man, it is uh, six o'clock, 65 degrees outside. It is beautiful. The weather is glorious, feels wonderful. I got the windows cracked, got my window down here. Loving it. Uh, got some traffic in front of me, but I'm feeling pretty good about today. We're going to a fundraiser for a rep or a council person or a uh, vote, right? What do we? Uh, what do you call him? Councilman elect? No. Council person. He's somebody who's running for city council, right? Running for council, yes. Running for city council, doing a uh, fundraiser at Frantones, the Italian place. Isn't uh, council member elect when you've been elected, haven't taken office? I they would assume so. Yeah, right. That's how it works. I'm tired. I'm tired. Don't be misled to think that all these people are here for the fundraiser. That was Dan. Frantons. <laughs> that is a long line for burgers. All right, what's the song, Ben? Apparently there's a car show of import cars and they're really really into their econo boxes. That is a whole lot of no performance Japanese economy cars right there behind me. Don't get me wrong, they can be fast. There's just none behind me. The only reason to come here right now is walk the kids so they get tired and check out the clearance. We'll see how much those are, but I need some. Should we get one of these? No? Okay. No. Barbecue zone. Hey allies, so that didn't take very long. Somebody knew exactly what that picture was and a very, a very specific description of the picture. That picture is an artist rendering, if you will, of uh, DE Dust 2 from Counter-Strike. Spent a lot of years playing that, uh, playing that game, and that map in particular. And that was a bomb site B, specifically the vantage point. A very specific, uh, that, that spot. Anyway, Pop Socket is going to you, fine sir. Hold on. <laughs> Ambrose Burnside with uh, an excellent thumbnail to go along with your name, sir. Uh, you get the pop socket. Way to go. Hey, what's up, allies? So I did that video yesterday on the SDR, and it reminded me of a comment I got on another ham radio video. Wade P. Scroggins, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, um, asked me if I could recommend a laptop or a desktop as a base station. Um, and obviously we're, we're talking about ham radio here. And so I thought about it and I, and I kind of didn't understand the question, but then I, then I started to realize what he meant. I, I clarified, I was like, well, are you planning on doing SDR? Um, do you need portable capabilities? What's the deal? He goes, no, I'm just, I'm new to ham radio. Um, wanted to know if I need something portable or blah, blah, blah as a base station. I kept going back to base station. So I thought, um, this is a really good opportunity to explain something about radio, okay? Um, radio existed before there was computers. Radio existed before there was a silicon microchip. Um, radio is a tr communication medium. Um, it is a way of moving the molecules in the air, right, all around us, uh, creating sound um, and doing that over over the air. That's it. So you don't need a computer at all for radio. And this is no uh, disrespect to Wade. I understand where he's going and I'm going to clarify this further into why you might want a computer. But for radio, the act of just, just radio, you just need um, some kind of oscillator, some kind of amplifier, sometimes you don't even need that, and some kind of antenna that is resonant on the frequency that you're oscillating at. And that's about it for radio, and that's all you need for, for Morse code, and then like a key. You could even just use two bare wires, dee 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 dee, right? Uh, it's called spark gap. Anyway, um, the reason why you might want a, a, a laptop or a computer in your base station or your ham shack or whatever, you know, whatever, um, is if you wanted to log 
who it was you were talking to. A lot of people use the internet to do that, and they use computers to do that. Before then, they used pads of paper. They wrote down the call sign, they wrote uh, when they talked to the person, what frequency they worked, whether it was uh, single sideband voice, even AM voice, or Morse code, CW. What's happened more recently is, is through the proliferation of computers, we started using digital modes of communication. Now for digital modes, you do need a computer or a, pa a, type, a tablet or something that can take the tones and either decode them or, or encode them. Now, you can use uh, an SDR to, to receive digital radio and then decode with the software on your computer. Um, and you can also transmit in, with some SDRs through a computer. Or it could just be a simple, regular, traditional radio, right? Traditional radio that has an output and that output goes into your sound card. Think of like a speaker output or a microphone in, um, input, right? That's transmit and receive, transmit and receive, and that goes into the sound card in the back of your computer. So you just need software that would receive the bleeps and bloops on the microphone, the input side, and uh, be able to take what you're typing um, and transmit it out in the appropriate bleeps and bloops for that mode that you're using. PSK31, for example. I've mentioned PSK31 before. Again, go check out my video on PSK31. So um, the, the larger answer to the question is you don't need a computer at all. You, um, you can have one and they're good for lots and lots of things, but if you wanted to do a soda climb, uh, climb to the top of a mountain just to talk to people um, with a really high vantage point so you could talk to people really far away, then you just need a radio and, and you, can, um, you can use CW, which is I've mentioned before, is the best way uh, to get as far as possible. It uses very little power and propagates really well because um, understand clarifying now I'm getting in the weeds a bit but clarifying that CW um, it's just dits and dots right da 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 well the absence of a dit or a da is is nothing so it's a binary it's one or a zero you either hear it or you don't hear it and then you're really just li listening for length right length of tone Human voice, much more complicated than that. So uh, CW, you can hear way down in the noise, right? Right. You can have static and noise over the top of it, da da, and you can still pick it up and still know. But if I was talking and you had noise over the top of me, you might not be able to pick out what I'm saying. Anyway, topic for another discussion. Um, that'll do it for today. Question of the day. Um, to me, radio is really an old thing that is, it uses computers because ham radios are very inventive people, very creative. Um, but there are other things like that too. Telephones pre-existed before computers. Cars existed before computers. Lots of things existed before computers. And I think that we've just gotten so used to computers kind of being the center of the, of the universe of our life. So the question of the day is, what are some things that you remember before there were computers? And, and how has it changed since the advent of computers? I know this is a bit more esoteric of a question, but maybe there's some of you that are more in intimately involved in some areas of the market or whatever that have like seriously changed since computers would be out. I would love to hear those stories. Guys, that'll do it. If you haven't already, give me a thumbs up. Would love it if you subscribed, and I will talk to you tomorrow.